Okay. Hi, ladies. Hello. How is everybody? Good morning. Good. You guys doing well? Who finished? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so questions, comments, concerns. How'd everything go? I hate Byzantine. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so what was the challenge with it? I, you know, I, uh, I'm, ver I'm visual, so okay. it, I had a hard time getting the pattern in. And okay. I finally got it. I was practicing. Okay. And then I'm thinking, if I, I don't want to lose, I don't want to get rid of my thread by practicing on my green. In other words, if I start doing the Byzantine and then I can't do it, then I'm wasting my thread. You should have plenty of that thread. You got you got a whole skein of each of those colors. Okay. And you should have plenty. So if you practice that or have to rip out, I mean. Okay, I love have... ripping out. <laughs> <laughs> my when I thing. I'm telling you, <laughs> on this canvas, I probably. Okay, I didn't rip out as much as I stitched because there's a lot of stitching, but yeah. I ripped out a lot. So oh, okay. um, do not be afraid, number one, of running out of thread, especially on that tree, actually okay. on, any, on any of the trees, maybe the sparkly tree, but not even on that. But you've got plenty of thread, okay? Okay, good. Um, and if you run out, I can send you more. I have so much left on that tree. Um, oh, good. That... And I'm a visual person. And that's why when we talked about that tree on Friday, yeah. that's why I said kind of start in the middle of the tree. Um, don't start at the top. Um, yeah. Kind of start in the middle of one of the colors to set your pattern. Yeah. Because once you can set your pattern, um, and then I think someone also asked, and maybe it was Kathy who said, should I wait and do the sparkle last? I'm more of a visual person and I had to, I had to add the tent stitch above and below the Byzantine. I had to add that sparkle before I could go to the next. To the next, yeah. yeah. To the next one, because visually I, I can't do that. It messes me up. Yeah. But let's go back. If you make a mistake, <laughs> you have two options, okay? Let's be real. You can rip out or you can keep going. And it's okay. <laughs> you know what? If you make a mistake and say you, because remember, as we talked about on the Byzantine, you're going across three, you're going across three and down four. If somewhere yeah. along that pattern, you go across three and you go down five and that pattern changes, oh, well, that's just going to change the look of the tree a little bit. It's, it's not earth shattering. We are it, it, your tree will still look beautiful. So if along the way your pattern changes a bit, don't well, no one out. will notice. If anybody notices, I'm going to tell them to leave my house. Exactly. <laughs> it's your tree, and you tell them you chose to you chose to change the pattern. That's right. Right so don't worry about it. If there's a mistake made and your pattern changes along the way, it's really not that big of a deal. But that's kind of why. I, last week I said, start um, in the middle of a color and set your pattern that way and then kind of go back in. Does that make yeah. sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, so what, what other questions did we, ha did we have out of um, from last week? Anything? Um, I have a question. Okay, go right ahead. Um, I'm assuming when you say we have to do the whole background first, that as long as we have the background around the tree we're gonna work on, we're good. Correct. Now, because we have um, people who are much smarter than me here, I'm gonna <laughs> pull up this tree here with our, okay. Can you guys see this tree? We can see, yeah. I can see the whole screen. Yeah. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay. Oh. So this, smart young lady right here has decided. Um, so Kathy has decided, so she, she went all the way across up top and she went all the way across down the bottom. So she, so she knew how far out to go on the top. She knows how far out to go on the bottom, 
what she's decided she's going to do is she's going to finish going around this tree mm -hmm. and then she's going to do this tree. Mm -hmm. Then she's going to go around this tree and do this tree. Makes sense. And then she's going to go around the third tree so that that way the colors won't, then she's solving the problem of making sure the greens don't run into the whites. And then she doesn't have to do all of the background at once. Does that make sense? Yes. So you don't have to do all the background. Okay. So if you want to be like Kathy, that's how, <laughs> that's how you do it. One, the, the, so the two biggest reasons that I wanted you to do the background first was number one, because I wanted you to know how far up you had to go and out. And I wanted you to make sure that the green from the trees and the red from the Santa, most especially the reds, yeah. don't run on to the white threads as you're pulling the white through. So I think that's a great idea. Once you've, once again, once you've set your pattern, you can go around the tree, then do the tree, and then go around this tree. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's another that's another great option. Well done. One, one other question in yes. regards to the background. Yep. I know you talk about, I think you call it a finishing stitch or something that you're gonna do around the background at the yep. end, which I've never done. Okay. Is, is that just a really small stitch? So um, I actually got an email about that last night. So let's talk about it while we're here. Basically, it's, it's not even a finishing stitch. Basically, when we're done, we're just going to do two rows of a tent stitch, just a regular, just a regular uh, continental stitch, basically two rows of a continental stitch around the entire canvas. Yeah. And to make it easy on ourselves, you don't have to do single continental stitch. You can go over two um, canvas crosses okay. and they actually don't have to be every single, they can, you can kind of go over every other one. I, what I'm going to do is for next week, I'm going to actually do a visual and I'm going to try and maybe put it in an email so you guys can see it, but I'm definitely going to have it stitched out. I think, um, I may, I don't know if I put it in here as a binding stitch. Basically what it is, is because pillows are done with a, um, they're not done by hand, they're done by a sewing machine at the finisher. They have to have something to actually grip onto. Yeah, yeah. So um, you can either do two rows of a continental or a tent stitch around the entire piece. That's why we can't go all the way to the edge with our background stitch. Or you can do, you can, people call it a satin stitch or just a diagonal cross over, you know, a diagonal stitch over two of the intersections, but you don't have to go over every one. They can go over every other one, if that it's makes sense. It's not gonna show, right? It's definitely not gonna show. Right, it's they just will, so they can have something to turn underneath, okay. Exactly. I do so, that on every piece. <clears throat> you don't have to do it on, if you guys send it to us, Right now, our finishers are telling us the only thing they need those extra rows on are pillows. Uh -huh. So save your time, save that aggravation of extra <laughs> stitches only on pillows because everything out, the ornaments are all done by hand. And when they're doing them by hand, uh, they don't need the, that extra row. Okay. And are the extra rows going to be the same thread, Kristen? You do not have to do the, the extra rows with the thread because they won't show. I would say do it with whatever you have available. Okay. Um, so, cause this when I- like This stuff doesn't seem like it would- I would save well yourself, of, I would say, say save yourself the aggravation and I would use whatever, whatever you have handy. You're gonna have plenty of the greens. I would probably not use anything sparkly because yeah. it's kind of a pain to, to use. I would, you're gonna have extra greens. You're gonna have whatever, what, I, I'll say this whatever you have in your stash at home that you want to get rid of and you don't mind getting rid of, if you have um, some pearl cotton at home or whatever you want to get rid of that you don't mind, you know, use it. And it doesn't have to be white because it's not going to show. As a matter of fact, the finishers like it if it's a different color because they can see where your piece ends and the extra stitch starts. 
it can be purple, it can be black, <laughs> it, it will not show. Make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Great question because I did get some emails and some texts about that overnight. So it uh, it's just a finishing stitch it gives the, the finisher something to grab onto, um, and that doesn't matter. That's they'll need that stitch whether it's going to be a knife edge pillow, an inset pillow, um, any type of pillow because it will be done with the machine. Okay. So let's go on to tree number two. So the way I did this pillow is I put the, um, the entice in first, I sit, which is the sparkly stitch. I did that first to kind of, so I knew what, um, what space was available for the woven stitch in the pepper pot. Okay. So the, um, the woven stitch, it goes over, you can see over two um, thread intersections. There will be compensating for this stitch, okay? Once again, where, I'll tell you where I started. I started in that uh, diamond. There's two big diamonds kind of right in the center of the, that tree, um, mm -hmm. either one of those. and. You can actually start in any of them. I just started there because those, um, a I started in, you, I can't, I'm having trouble getting my words out. Start in any of the diamonds where you can get a complete pattern going. Just so you get used to setting the pattern where you can move across a whole row and then come back a whole row. Um, so for you guys that, um, are experienced stitchers, you'll understand when you need to compensate um, for if you're, if you're just starting out and you don't understand, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I can't finish this stitch. There's either white next to it to where I'm supposed to go or it's sparkly. The compensation stitch means just do what you can. If you can't go any further, I can only go across one, um, one thread intersection, then that's what you do. Um, so um, the, you, you work across to the right and then you come back from right to left according to that picture. So do it, you know, do one of the, the diamonds, one of the bigger diamonds to kind of get you used to going do, doing the pattern and then maybe go to um, one of the half diamonds Obviously, the one at the top, that tiny little piece is really hard. Um, nobody's going to notice that. It's, um, it, I can't even say that I, I just kind of did some stitches kind of going a, a little backward and a little forward because you can't really do much up there. Um, so that's the woven stitch. If you want to practice that or um, need help with that, um, and I'll, you know, and I'm going to, I'll say it, as I said before, um, at the beginning, if there's a stitch you don't like, or there's a stitch you want to change up, feel free. You, this was, this is a guide. Um, I just kind of thought these stitches lent themselves great to the trees. Um, how about that tree? Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Sound good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The next tree. So, how do you do this? So, there's three threads here. There's the background stitch, is a tent stitch. I picked wool. I picked wool because I didn't want it shiny. I didn't want it sparkly. I wanted it to completely recede in the background. That's that vineyard wool. It's that deeper, darker green. Okay. Then you see, I don't know if they're snowflakes or stars. You've got the one is sparkly and then the other one is not sparkly, but it's with silk. So those are done in different stitches. The sparkly stitch is done in the um, entice. That is a cross stitch. You can see that's the one that the picture right next to the tree. It's just a simple uh, X over where the intersection. Okay. 
If you don't want to do um, a cross stitch, you could simply do a tent stitch over, but it doesn't it I it doesn't give a complete. It looks half done um, on this star, mm -hmm. but you can you can do that if you want. Um, and then the other stars that are done in the splendor, sorry, pepper pot, um, that's the, the silk, those are French knots, okay? Some of you may never have done a French knot. Um, if you don't like French knots or mm -hmm. you, <laughs> I heard a chuckle, okay. <laughs> I want you to try doing French knots here, okay? Practice on, I want you to practice. I want you to at least give it a go, okay? Because I wanted the stars to look different. If you hate it and you wanna just do another cross stitch, you of course can do that. But it definitely gives it a different look because those actually sit higher than yeah. the entice. Okay, so it gives a different texture. It's with a different thread and a different texture. So that tree, when you look at it closely is very different. You've got the, the wool is flat, which is the background. The entice is sparkly. And then the pepper pot is, sits up even higher with the French knot, okay? Um, so the French knot, there is actually on YouTube. If you go to the Needlepoint Junction YouTube page, there is a French knot tutorial, okay? If you are local, I would be more than happy to spend time and um, show you how to do that. I can also FaceTime, we can do it. Um, I'm more than happy to help any way possible. Um, so as you can see, there's a few French knots, not as many as some of you have done for other projects, but yes, there are a few. Um, Did you do the background first? I, or do the star? what did I do here? I did the stars first here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I will tell you why, because the two, um, the two colored stars are kind of similar. Well, the, the, the ones that are French knots, those colors are similar to the background, but they stand out nicely against the dark. So I did the, um, I actually did the French knots first. I did the French knots then I did the um, entice, the sparkly cross stitch. And then I filled in with the background with what was left. When you guys are done this, I want everybody to say, I love French knots. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. They're really not that bad. You they're just, right? They're, no, I've been doing it. It's just... And they don't, they're not going to all look alike. And guess what? It yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And when they're all done, when you yeah. look at it from here, you're yeah. never going to know. But as I said, if you just want to make it another cross stitch, that's absolutely fine. And your tree and your pillow or whatever you decide to do with this is going to look fabulous. There is no right, wrong whatever you're most comfortable with. But if you've not done French knots, this is a great opportunity to learn how to do it. Um, <laughs> I love all the chuckles. Um, that's why a class is so good because um, if you are nervous about doing it or have never um, had the opportunity to have a canvas where, oh my gosh, this is a, this is, this mean teacher is forcing me to do this right here. <laughs> So um, that's the French knot. So it, um, if you're having trouble or you need extra help, reach out, okay? I just asked you. You absolutely can. So those are small French knots. So you only want to wrap it around once. When you do it. Um, that, I believe I wrapped it around once, okay. maybe twice. Wraps 
practice, but practice and see how they look. Because that uh, that's pepper pot, I think that was wrapped around twice. Because I think wrapping around once, they would have fallen through the... Um, now, I... Okay, there's two ways to... I don't want to confuse anybody if you've never done French knots. Block this out. When I do my French knots, I go over the T. When some people do French knots, they go down in the same hole that they come up in. I go over like a tent stitch over that cross because I want them to sit up high. So there's no way that they can fall back in, but I believe with the pepper pot, um, I went, I wrapped it around twice. Make sense? Everybody who knows what the um, um, French knot is, I went around twice and I sit my French knots on the cross not go down through the same hole. Both are options. I just probably am not good enough at French knots that I can go down in the same hole that I come up in. So I like to go on the cross because I like them. I think the whole purpose of the French knot is I like them to sit up to give that three dimension. So, but that's a great question. Any other question about that tree at all? I'd like you guys to know why I picked the threads and what purpose. Um, the, so there are three different threads going on in that tree and they all had a, a specific purpose. Um, and use that when you guys are, when you guys pick out your own canvases, think about, you know, what you want to happen in those canvases. Well, when I pick out wool, wool, it doesn't shine. That's going to recede when I pick out, um, Pepper pot, pepper pot is silk, that's shiny, that's gonna come forward, but it's not as shiny as entice, which is super shiny, that's gonna come forward the most. So, um, make sense? Yes, it does, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, also about the stitch, like um, I just happened to look down and see the um, tree trunks, that that stitch, that stitch, even though the wool is flat, also is flat, that stitch creates that, that nubby um, bark-like. Yeah. So um, the stitch can create the effect that you're looking for, even though um, the, thread, the thread doesn't. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So tree number four, all sparkly. So you guys are probably laughing at my stitch, at my stitch guide because that it's upside down. So I said, disregard the numbers because I could not find, I searched and searched and searched and I could not find this stitch with the, with the numbers going the right way. So basically you're just going over, you're angling your stitches up like a, what would that be? Like a triangle um, over two, okay? Once again, like the background, it doesn't matter which, which one goes on top, just keep it consistent. Make sense? Yep. So you can see the, um, are you guys all on the, if you're looking at the stitch guide under tree number four, that stitch on the left is the stitch that's always on the, on the top. Make sense? Yep. Um, let me see. I don't have my glasses on. Um, I think on mine, I don't have my glasses. I think mine is, oh, they are. Thank you very much. Can't do much without my glasses. Um, in mine, uh, the way I do it is I go left to right, right to left. So um, mine is a little bit different than the stitch guide. I go left to right, right to left. So mine is different than the stitch guide, but it doesn't matter because I kept it consistent throughout the entire, th throughout the entire tree. So, um, work from the top down. I work from the bottom up. Bottom up. So, um, and then what I did is leave that, leave that bottom open because that's a compensating stitch. The way I did it is I did the first stitch that I could complete in entirety. So you can see that bottom one is like a little mini stitch. Mm -hmm. Leave that one to the end. 
finish, finish that one and you do the first stitch that you can complete in entirety and just go back and fill that other one in if you're not comfortable starting with a compensating stitch. So do the first stitch that you can complete going over two um, canvas intersections, whether or not you wanna go left to right or right to left, it doesn't matter as long as you keep it consistent throughout the entire pattern, or the entire tree, okay? And then I worked all the way up to the top and you can see, I'm gonna put my tree all the way up to this. You might not be able to see. It does get a little messy up at the top. It's hard because, because of the angle, there's definitely some compensating and just remember, it doesn't matter when you're looking at it, you become so focused on, oh my gosh, that doesn't look right. It's a little, um, it's, it, it looks messy. It's, um, don't worry about it when you're done and everything's filled in, nobody's going to notice that it might be off of a stitch or two. <laughs> um, so the, the, my one big thing on that was just like the, um, background, just keep your stitches consistent with which thread lands on top. Um, so the stitch is exactly as it's shown. Just don't, don't look at those numbers. The one, two, three, four, um, is that confusing? Mm -mm. No, no. Okay. Not for me. But okay. So if we were to look at that little picture where the numbers are, yep. and we went by those numbers, the way I stitch it, the way I would do it, it would be four, three, one, two. Yeah. Okay. And then I would go up to the next row. I would go just above four mm -hmm. and then above, just above three and then just above one and just above two. Yeah. Make sense? Yes. 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 Okay. And then you just, and then I, what I did is I just picked one color. I went all the way up to the top and you can see, um, um, the, the one color you are using from, um, the other tree. It's the only color that we shared from another tree, which is the, I think it's E236. Yeah. That we used in tree number one, and Tice 236, which is the middle color green, um, which is the middle green. That's the only thread that, that, you, um, that you shared tree, the first tree and the last tree, just to kind of tie it all together. That's why I shared that color. Make sense? Yep. Um, so those are your three trees. I mean, four, well, three trees for today. So those are your four trees. Um, so why did I pick these? Why did I pick these stitches? You, I told you a little bit why I picked the threads that I picked, why I picked the different stitches, especially for that third tree. I wanted different textures. I wanted different, I wanted some of the thread to recede. Um, I had one, one tree that was all sparkly. Um, I also wanted the trees to have different, um, I didn't want them all to be diagonal. I, you can see one of the trees is crisscross. Some of them are up and down. Um, so I, I really tried to um, create trees that had different, different, not only different textures, different direction, different threads. Um, so I really thought about um, trying to fit as much um, as much as I could into into the canvas in terms of picking threads and textures and um, all, all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? It was a very I, I really tried to think about, things as I was putting, putting this together. Um, so you have until next 
Friday. So next Friday is our next class. So what I plan on doing next Friday is talking about Santa. Not to, wait a minute, sorry. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank you. Okay. I'm so glad you guys are here to keep me up to date. Next <laughs> Tuesday. See, I'm thinking today's Friday. <laughs> it's only Tuesday. Next Tuesday is our next class. We're going to talk about Santa. Yeah. We'll start again. We'll go over any questions that you guys have on any of the trees. Obviously, I'm available between now and then with questions. But um, Tuesdays. Um, Santa, it's the one with the most stitches, um, the most, um, probably the most going on. Um, and then we can talk about finishing. Um, and then, you know, if we need to, uh, then I'm gonna be out of town for a couple weeks. Maybe what we can do if you guys want is to schedule maybe a follow-up, finish up, wrap up class for um, maybe the beginning of September. And then um, if you guys have questions um, or any last, you know, any last minute things, does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Cause we're okay. far behind you. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so the the follow-up would be great, I think. I don't think this- Hi, Cease. Hi. <laughs> so this was not meant to be finished, obviously, in two and a half weeks. Uh, we were just trying, to, due to obviously not getting the threads in and um, me with some scheduling issues, uh, we wanted to at least get all the classes taped and get the classes completed before, before um, my trip. And so we, we just got in a little bit of a time crunch. Um, but the, of course, this was not meant to be finished in two and a half weeks. Um, so uh, you, nobody's behind. If you haven't even put the thread to the canvas, you are not behind. Um, there is no rush. I want you guys to enjoy it. I don't want anyone to feel like this has to be finished in any. And there's no time that this has to be finished. It, we're obviously not getting it back in time for Christmas this year. So you have until probably August 1 of next year until this has to go to the finisher. <laughs> Sit back, relax, take your time. So um, the, the Zoom login is the same for next week, next Tuesday, as it is for today. Um, nothing will change. So um, like I said, reach out with any questions. Come into the store if you have any questions. Call me, text me, hunt me down. Kristen, can I just ask a background question? You absolutely can. And I'm not sure why this is, and maybe like it's a pers a my personal background or like. <laughs> no, 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 no. The background <laughs> stitch, which I've never done before, but okay. I'm having a really hard time when I start and end the stitch, tucking the ends in. You can tuck them in any, just slide them through the stitches. Just slide it underneath any of the stitches you've already done. You will not be able to see it from the front. Okay. Are you worried that you're going to be able to see it? No. Well, that's what that was at the beginning. I was worried about that, but I think what I was doing was not leaving enough of a tail so that oh. when I did one stitch, the end of it actually popped out when I was starting the next stitch. So okay. I ended up pulling out the stitch so that I had a longer piece to put under. And yeah, you can either, you can always even just do part of a stitch and finish. You don't have to finish a whole stitch before you tuck it under. Um, obviously it's probably easier to do that, but yeah, I mean, you're probably going to want to leave you know, good size more than I usually do. Probably because it's, you know, yeah. I mean, I. Kristen, I, I have the same concern that Pat has. Um, so I've been leaving long tails, but the more I look at the long tails, I think, oh my gosh, I hope I'm going to have enough thread, you know, to well, complete the whole thing. But I've just kept them long because I was concerned like Pat was. Yeah. If, I think my were tails were, were probably yeah, two that and a half looks, inches. Two and I'm half sure inches. I was about eight holes out every time, at least, sometimes more. And yeah. it seems to have stayed so far because I had to pull out 
um, since I was trying to alternate one row I missed and I was okay. having to pull out and, and it was tough <laughs> where I had slid under. So it's not okay. as worrisome as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I, I didn't notice that problem when I was stitching it, but if you're having that issue, just leave a little bit more of a tail. And if we have to send you a little bit more, then, then we'll do that. Um, maybe you guys are better stitchers than me, and I don't know enough to... <laughs> I don't think that's it. I doubt that. I doubt that very much. So Pam, can I share what you did on your background? Oh, sure. So like yeah, can, uh, I don't. I wonder if we can. Can you put it up on the screen so we can well, see it? You know, for some reason I'm blacked out here. Yeah, I can't and see you. I can just see your name. Yeah, just, just, and I so, don't know. So I Pam, don't know how to do that for her background? You have to just turn on the video. If you turn on well, the video, it, it never you're... gave me that opportunity. So let me that see. It. Okay, usually ah, it's at the bottom of the go. screen. Here we go. Oh, I, we see. There you are. Well, thank you. Now oh, I'm doing something new that? today. All right. Let's see if I've got anything to hide. Well, she's talking. Is she do, she do a different stitch? She moved her. I don't know. So, um, so lift up the lift it up just a little bit. So Tell what she did is she stacked, that's perfect. She staggered her background oh. stitch oh, rather yeah. than being lined mm -hmm. up. She shifted it over. So that middle stitch lines up in the middle. So it's going to kind of give, um, give uh, the illusion of maybe like a, uh, a little movement in the sky. Yeah, so so yeah, you... move it back a little bit away. It's... Oh. We lost you. You know, I'm trying to think if I could. There we go. A, it works there we now. Go. You can see it. Okay. Um, yep. Now we can see it. So I'm super curious to see it. Um, it goes in and out of focus. Yeah. So very cool. I've never seen it done that way. Um, so very, and very cool option. I never even thought of that. So uh, Pam is our next teacher for the next class. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, oh, sorry. Um, so you guys, so feel free. Like, as I said, this is your canvas. If there's something that you like or you think would look better, by all means, jump on it. Um, so, um, okay, the person who had the question about the binding stitch, she's not on, but I, did I answer the question about the stitch at the end? And I think we had talked about some of the people that were here in person. A lot of you guys got, um, yes. Okay. Can I take your canvas yeah. real fast? A lot of you guys from, um, have this on the edge of yours, this right here from What's it called? Selfage. <laughs> okay, so you guys are smarter than me. I only work at a needlepoint store. So, no, it's okay. It's See this? Do a lot of you guys have this on your canvas? I have it. Yeah. So it's not taped. It's actually right. finished off. Finished. Yeah. Okay. So I what I did is I called the finisher to see if this could count as finishing like for that, those two extra rows so that you could um, uh, do background stitch all the way to the edge. She said she'd rather not because it's too stiff, okay? So you can't go all the way to the edge. You really need to save room to do those two extra rows, okay? So um, it was a... It was a good try. We tried to go a little further, but so can I do one more you can, snowflake? Yes, you can do one more snowflake out. Yeah, okay. So um so that was a good question. But so if you guys um so reach out with any questions, let me know thoughts, questions, concerns, and we'll look forward to doing Santa. If you want, um between now and next Tuesday, take a look at the stitch guide for Santa. Um, there is one more challenging stitch on there um, that uh, just take a look at it. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. How about that? Okay. <laughs> so <I'll, laughs> I see some giggles. I love it when I can see your faces and I can see you guys giggling. <laughs> you guys are pros. Um, yeah. 
Right. Um, so are you guys ready? Um, any follow up or last minute questions before I, I think I'm turn good. you loose? Once I start stitching, I'll have 30 questions. Well, good. <laughs> Call me then. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. okay thank Great. you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Bye. bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. So sorry, I was late. I wasn't supposed to be here at all. No, that's great. Um, but question, I can end it.